Hey there guys, this is going to be part 7 of the Shipping Container Shop Project and today I'm going to go over all the things that I've accomplished since the last part in the series and that has been primarily all electrical based as you can tell by the light above my head and you can see a little outlet over there, that's my dedicated welding outlet and a whole bunch of other outlets and lights and things like that. Uh, so I will first go over most of the electrical stuff and then I'll talk about some other little random things and kind of answer some questions that people have had about different things like the vents on the high side of the roof which I think I forgot to talk about when I put them in and then I'll talk about what's to come so without a doubt the toughest portion of this phase of the project was digging this trench for my electrical supply for my main panel uh, but I did have a little bit of help uh, our new puppy Olive <laughs> liked to play in the water when Good I was kind of softening up the ground and my daughter also pitched in as well as my wife so it wasn't all alone for the majority of the wire running through the shop i used an old roll of romex wire from my house build and i just stripped it to get a white and a black wire because i really only needed two wires for the boxes and the components to go together for the surface mount, it's pretty much just plug and play, uh, put everything in, punch out the holes, and screw them together. After that was all mounted, I then just uh, ran my uh, runs of wire through each side of the boxes uh, to the adjoining boxes, and then got them prepped for outlets. The process of wiring the outlets was pretty simple as I had done it a few times before. Um, this black wire usually goes on the brass screws and then the white wire connects to the silver screws. But once the outlets were done and it got time to do the switches and a couple of the double runs, I was a bit confused and I called my wife's Uncle Joel. He's an electrician and just a super smart guy and he came in and helped me do uh, some of the things that were kind of confusing me. So that's him there and uh, he's just a wealth of wisdom and just a fun guy to be around. And he came over a couple days and helped me get it all wired in and, and basically just made sure everything was safe. The wire nuts on using my pliers like this uh -huh. and that gets them extra tight where they're never going to come off. Is it okay. on? They're done. No power. You couldn't see it? Yeah. Okay, lights on. Lights back off. Everything works. Did a yeah. good job. Nice. Okay, so you just saw pretty much how all of this electrical went together. Uh, as you can see, I've got all the outlets. I've got lights up there. I've got a fan. I've got a cord reel right here. So now I'm going to grab the camera and I'm going to kind of try to talk you through the runs of these electrical lines, uh, how they run from the box, where they go down to the switch. Um, those were some of the things that I really didn't cover too much in when I was doing it, just because, like I said, I wasn't exactly sure. So let me grab the camera now and we'll take a look that so here's my best quick and dirty of how all of the power in this shop is routed ultimately all of the power starts at my house runs through that trench that you saw earlier and then is routed to this mini breaker panel from there there are four separate breakers which all go to four separate runs of conduit the 50 amp breaker that you see on the right runs through this three quarter inch conduit line to that little box and then on to the outside to a dedicated welding receptacle. The next run is this one on the left and this is a dedicated outlet run. It does nothing but outlets all along the south wall of the shop. And the next run we'll look at is that top course of conduit which runs along the corner there and then up right along the edge of the ceiling and the north wall. And this run is simply just a series of outlets that ultimately power the shop lights because they're just plug-in shop lights. And those outlets are powered by this switch. So the left switch powers the shop lights. And the right switch powers the a little porch light outside the front door. And the final run of conduit is the farthest to the right that comes out of the top of the panel and that simply powers a series of outlets on the north wall. It runs up above the door, shares a couple of boxes with the outlets that power the lights, comes down in that little curvy section, 
hits an outlet right there. And then my final, final outlet, I just put a plate that accepts a switch. So in case I wanna add a light that shines out to the open doors in the future, I can do so. And this is also the outlet that will power this mounted cord reel. Uh, I got this from Northern Tool. It's a triple tap and uh, I think it's going to come in pretty handy uh, being able to get power outside to areas that I may not have an outlet. And if you're wondering where I got the shop lights, I got these from Costco. They are Fight or Fate brand, F-E-I-T. Uh, they're LED shop lights. They're not hardwired. I thought that was actually kind of a cool thing. I can just plug them in. That's why I put the outlets on that side. I also like the fact that I can turn these lights off as I need just with the pull cord as well as using the switch so I can control how much ever light that uh, you know I really need. So if I just wanna have the shop all dark except for one right over one workbench, I can do that. And for another question that a lot of people have asked, uh, because I do live in Arizona, uh, was whether I'm gonna put AC in the shop. Um, I probably will at some point, maybe a little window unit, but I would have to cut a hole um, and I don't want to do that right now. And honestly, just airflow does wonders in Arizona. So I got this shop fan, um, just like the cord reel. I got this from Northern Tool. It's a strong way fan. It was one of the best reviewed ones that I found. And honestly, it's kind of like a hurricane when you turn it on. I won't face it directly at the camera, uh, but I think it's got two or three different settings. And then it just swivels on this axis up here. So you can swivel it out, face it that way. Whoop. Or if I'm working on my workbench over here, I can have it there. <laughs> and then when it's not in use, I can just uh, put it right back up against the wall and it fits nice and flush. And to clear up one thing that I think I mentioned in one of the previous parts about installing a barn style light over the indoors, that's what this light originally was intended to be is the light that went over the indoors to provide a little work light. However, when I went to mount it over those double doors, I just didn't have enough room to uh, have the doors swing uh, properly. So I moved over here. I actually really like the look of it and it gives a great little kind of tiny house appeal, a really nice aesthetic. And I'll probably end up mounting some lights maybe on the insides of the doors to give like some more directed uh, working light. And one of the other things I added as far as an exterior light as well as a kind of a security light and something that's just plug and play and really convenient are these little solar security lights that I put on either end of the shop. Uh, they're mounted right there and they have an accompanying solar panel that I've mounted on the low sides of each corner of the roof. Um, the solar panels originally come with a little nice little swivel but I get such high winds that I took the swivel off and I just mounted it directly on the roof just to keep it a little more secure. But so far so good, I like them and I'll probably end up getting a couple more to add to my chicken coop uh, for the chicken security measures that I like to take, <laughs> overblown security measures. And then I might even uh, try to incorporate one of those into the greenhouse uh, if I ever do an update that I've been promising to do for a long time. Okay, so now it's time to talk about some of those random things I said I was gonna talk about. The first thing I wanted to uh, address is the corners of the shop, uh, specifically the wooden corners. Uh, nobody's ever said anything about it, but those will be getting some trim at some point. So if you ever see that in one of the videos and say, wow, that looks uh, really shoddy, uh, why doesn't Joe cover it up? It's planning to be covered up, I just haven't done it as of yet. And then the next thing I wanted to talk about that I have gotten several comments about are those little silver vents up there. I never showed the installation of them, but essentially they are just there to allow air to flow from the low side of the roof to the high side, just like normal air would flow. And then one other thing that I wanted to show is on the back side of the shop before I installed the insulation, I installed a board that I will eventually build an awning. That's just a little bit shorter than I am. Um, and that's all because of uh, just to keep uh, high winds from, from affecting it, but it will store some scrap steel, scrap wood, and then I'm gonna store my firefighter trailer, the little pneumatic CO2 powered one. I'll have a little driveway or a little place where I can just pull the quad through and park it under there out of the sun. 
Well, that's pretty much it, guys. So what's to come for the next part in this project? Uh, being that I have lights, electricity, and a structure to work in, uh, really the only thing left to do is to make some work surfaces, like workbenches, and something to store stuff in, like shelves or cubbies. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for the next part. Uh, my plan right now is to start off with some uh, workbenches that will be mounted to the wall on both of these sides and I will be putting most of my like messy tools like saws, uh, drill press, stuff like that in this area close to the doors so that I can simply use an air hose, spray all the debris out. And then for some of the things like the grinders and like uh, sanders, I plan on mounting those directly to the doors so when I open them, I can just use the tool, let the sawdust and shavings go to the ground, go to Mother Earth where it belongs, and then I just keep on going about my day. Um, I'm excited for that. Um, as for the back of the shop, I kind of still want to keep that a little man cave-ish, so I want to keep it a little more, a little bit cleaner. I plan on having a uh, more of like a tinkering workbench back there, and that's probably where be most of the shelves will be. I might have some some shelves up here for tools and accessories. Um, but I'm thinking back there it will be a little more organized. Up here is going to be the chaos. And then um, as for other projects, uh, one other thing I've been thinking about is adding some lighting underneath the awning. And I got this idea since I've been working uh, using these shop lights. These are LED shop lights. It's the first time I've ever used LED shop lights. They are so freaking bright and nice to use that I have an idea that I can make some tracks with a bracket put the shop lights in it and have kind of uh, focused spotlights for certain projects, especially when I'm working at night. Um, and then when I want to use them just as regular shop lights, I just take them down and <laughs> take them wherever I need. Uh, other than that, uh, you may have seen a clip of a dog earlier. That is our new puppy. Her name's Olive. She's an Australian Shepherd. She is super sweet and super, super, super smart. Um, so I will probably break away from the shipping container shop project for a little bit to build a dog house and maybe do some other stuff just to spice things up. Uh, she's a family dog. She sleeps inside most of the time, but uh, we do want to give her something for when we're away during the day uh, to kind of hole up in when she's in her little yard. Uh, and other than that, uh, I started an Instagram account, did one post. It was super easy and I plan on posting more. So if you want to try following me there, I would appreciate it. Uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching. Give a thumbs up if you like this and stay tuned. My daughter and I had a little camp out last night in the shop and we had a great time. Uh, so I'll show you a couple little clips I just took with my phone. As always, I will see you next time. We are camping out. Where? In Daddy's shop. It's a camp out night? It's camp out night. It's the first night we're doing it? The first night we're doing it together. One time me and Mom did it. At, at, um, and we watched Sound of Music together. Oh, really? Yep. But you and Daddy are doing it tonight, huh? Yeah. Are you excited? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Bye. You say goodnight? Good night.